good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice the radio, and assuming this is working, we're opening a box of chilling rain, and I am absolutely delighted. I am also zoomed in way too far, because I was making a thumbnail, but I'm no longer making a thumbnail. So we need to zoom out so we've actually got a little bit of playmat to work with. Now, usual rules apply. I think I'm live. I want to be live. I I'm hoping I'm live. <laughs> but if anybody wants to confirm for me, that would be absolutely lovely. Now, I am also... I, I have to muck around for a couple of settings here nice and quickly because... I I can't actually see the live chat. The thing is, you guys are seeing this like a couple seconds late. So I have to kind of watch this. I can't watch the chat. I've got an iPad. We'll talk about the iPad in a minute. There are people watching. If you would be nice enough to say something. Yes, there's people in the chat. Woo. Right. So the giveaway. Here's the deal. This box was provided by the lovely folks at Cardex. Cardex is a great website. Now, you should know this by now, but I'm going to repeat it. I don't partner with any businesses for the sake of it. You will notice that my partnerships on this channel... Right, don't tell us the wrong way when I say this, right? Channels of my rough size generally have more partnerships than I do. The reason I have comparatively few partnerships, and I get this question quite a lot from people who check out my channel, and they're like, why don't you have more sponsorships? My answer is because I only partner with businesses that I feel comfortable telling you guys, hey, these are cool, you should use them. Cardex is run by two dudes, Tommy and Tom. I adore they have the same name. I once stayed in a house with Tommy and Tom. There was one other person there. His name was Tom. Four dudes, one non-Tom. That was me. Don't know why you needed to know that story, but now you know. I like Tommy and Tom. I like what they do. I like them as people. I believe in their integrity. And I think Cardex is a cool website. Basically, it is a marketplace. You buy and sell cards. It is in that way, kind of like eBay, except if you sell on eBay, you pay 10% in the sale of fees. If you do it on Cardex, you pay 3%. Now, I have spent a bunch of time as a maths teacher, and I can tell you this with absolute certainty. 3% is quite a bit less than 10%. And I, I did, I checked that, ladies and gentlemen, just to be sure, but it definitely is. So that's kind of cool. I like Cardex. If you're buying and selling cards, if you're looking for cards, if you're looking to buy cards, I would recommend Cardex very, very nicely. If you want to join in the giveaway, have you looked at the description for this video yet? Because if you have looked at the description for this video yet, you will see that there is a link. Now, full disclosure, in order to enter the giveaway, you need to follow the link. And the giveaway is on Cardex. And in order to enter the Cardex giveaway, please forgive my arm, you will have to be a member of Cardex. You'll have to have an account. Well, of course you have to have an account on Cardex to enter a giveaway run with Cardex. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, that should be fairly obvious. So... I am posting links around that's why my arm is trailing across the play map because the keyboard's like here just off screen. I've got my juice. It, the set might be called Chilling Rain. We are in a bit of like a little heat wave thing going on in the UK at the moment. It is frankly uncomfortable. So hello to the lovely people in the chat. What I want to turn this video into or this stream into is, hey, we're opening Chilling Rain. There's a giveaway, but also let's do a bit of a Q&A. Throw some questions at me. I don't do enough streams. Honestly, I was going to do this stream yesterday. And, and Tommy and Tom, they sent me the box. And they were like, hey, do you want to do a stream? And I was like, well, I can't do a stream on, on Wednesday because my wife's working late. i got to go pick up the kids. Can I do a box opening? And they were like, oh, dude, streams are so much cooler. And I think we should thank them for that because streams are so much cooler. I just don't get the chance to do very many of them. So shout out to those lovely dudes for pushing me to do a stream. That was the right. Favorite TCG set. I love the Heart Gold Soul Silver block as a whole. I absolutely adore it. My favorite set ever is probably the Japanese set Lost Link, which got split between Triumphant and Call of Legends. I almost picked up a booster box on eBay and I didn't. Oh my goodness, that is out of my price range nowadays. 
I did not pre-order this box, like I've said, and there should there should have been a note on. I, I clicked the box on YouTube like a good boy. This is a sponsored video. This is sponsored by the lovely folks at Cardex. However, and I've said this before and I'll happily say it again, the only reason I am partnering with Cardex for videos like this is because I like them and I believe in them as a store. If I didn't, I wouldn't be running this, this video with them. It really is as simple as that. Now, if you go over to the giveaway page, you'll notice there are some things you can do to increase your chances. Visit them on Facebook, visit them on Instagram, share it, and subscribe to me and Cardkeeper Toby. I like Cardkeeper Toby as well. He is, and I mean this sincerely, I'm not just saying this, Cardkeeper Toby is a wonderful dude. We, we chatted a little bit, we met when the Pokemon Center opened up in London, and... We like instantly got on because we're both like hyper excitable Pokemon fans. So go check out his channel as well. He has also done an opening with the dudes from Cardex. So please do make sure you check out that one as well. Because Toby is an awesome dude. Hey, Toby's here. Toby likes me too. Thank you, Toby. Oh, now I, now I look like a terrible person for not joining his stream. Dude, I was picking up my kids. It's not my fault. Children. <laughs> um... Saturnine Bear says, do I like hammers? Weirdly, no. For, for very, for a, for a reason I might tell you later on. When I was a law teacher, my nickname was Ross the Hammer Gilbert. And so I always wanted to play a hammer decks. But no, I despise hammers, ladies and gentlemen. So that's all the preamble out of the way. Card X are awesome. You should be checking them out. Enter the giveaway. There is a link in the description of this video. It's already there, ready to go. Check out Cardkeeper Toby, who is a lovely dude. Um, Daiti PDCGO, I'm well, thank you very much. I'm like legitimately excited. It occurred to me the other day, it has been a weirdly long time since I cracked a booster box. Here we go, pack number one of Chilling Rain. I just apparently, I've not opened a, I've bought some cards. I mean, you know how many cards I've bought. I opened them all on this channel. But yeah, I really don't very often open booster boxes. So... I'm kind of psyched I can do that. I love Melanie. Melanie is a great card for water decks. You are going to see a lot of it. There's a Brawly. Rev Hollow Fur Throw. And we start with an Amphros. Uh, not only is it a, just a, a non-hollow rare, it's not a good non-hollow rare. <laughs> Rate How I Met Your Mother. It is one of my very favorite TV shows ever, but don't watch the last five minutes. The last five minutes of How I Met Your Mother, and I feel extremely strongly about this, it is this wonderful story about a dude talking to his kids, telling them this big long story that led him to get together with their mother, and then at the last five minutes they're like, oh no wait, this story was actually about something else, let me ruin the whole thing. Boo! But skip the last five minutes, great TV show. By the way, uh, we're looking for the Arita Shadow Rider Calyrex, that is the one card in this set I want more than any others. Gold Snorlax? Would like that card. Man, we've got 170 people watching. I should do this more. I really should do this kind of video more. Do these streams. Maybe I should start streaming my openings. Right, we've got a Red Follow Ghastly. And, ooh, full up Doctor. Doctor, Doctor, please. Oh, man, I've not got any sleeves ready for this. What am I talking about? There are sleeves all around me. I, I'm never going to I'm never gonna show you my room, in my studio, until it's properly um fixed. Because it is a mess right now. I'm actually taking a week. I haven't had a week off literally in years of this YouTube. My wife's making me take a week off in July. And one of the things we're doing is sorting the studio. Maybe when it's sorted, I'll give you a little bit of a virtual tour. Don't worry. I will make videos in advance. I'm not going to be going dark for a week. But I'm actually going to spend a week not making videos. And I'm, I'm a little worried about that. Okay. But there are sleeves all over. You need the full art Flannery and Brawly? I'll be honest with you, they were not my number one and two cards in this particular set. Oh, Britney Stollard's never seen a live stream of mine before. I hope it is everything you dreamed of and a little bit more. I hope it's not disappointing. You're right. This could do with more like two likes, 200 people, two likes. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Drop those likes, would you? Drop them down below. Come on, let's have a bit of a like fest. Let's drop all them likes. Let's see the like numbers exploding. That would be that would make me happy. 
Right, now that we've met, uh, excuse me, now that we've met 200, oh, Bounty, and mm, it's not terrible. It's got an interesting ability that doubles up energy. Now that we've made 200 viewers, could we please have everybody in the chat? I would like to know where you are in the world and what time is it where you are? That would be lovely. So uh, I'm currently in Cornwall down in the UK and it is 11 minutes past five in the afternoon, which is it's kind of the latest I can justify doing a live stream because then the kids go to bed and like I'm in this room next door to me is my son. Next door to him is my daughter. I am not a quiet man. So uh, live streams aren't good. When I do the Players' Cup, I've done those live streams of Pokemon. I actually have to set up a different room in my house because I'm too loud in my studio. <laughs> Ooh, nice hollow Weavile. This is a card I want to love for the UKO something next term. It is not a card that I particularly love. I want to. So what have we got? We got Texas, Illinois, the Netherlands, Kentucky. We got a few in Texas. We've got Alabama, Pennsylvania, Bracknell, Georgia, Australia. Two in the morning. Okay, anyone that's watching this at two in the morning live from Australia, massive, massive respect. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, seven in the evening. Man, we have a proper international, um, we have a proper international viewer base here and I like it. Okay, it's still showing us two likes for me. Somebody said there's a hundred likes, so... I kind of want to refresh it, but if I refresh it, I'll lose the chat. I do have the chat open in a separate window here, so I will get to a bunch of questions. If I miss your question, I'm really sorry. We only have so much time. Right, how cool is the art on this Blitzel? Seriously, it's amazing. And Bayonet, I love Bayonet. My buy list is going up later in the week. I love this Bayonet. I think this is the kind you want to have. It's very much like Frost. Lass? It's too many Frosts nowadays. Frost Lass was a phenomenal counter to Reshiram and Charizard when that deck was really big. Bayonet doesn't have the same thing. It doesn't KO Urshifu V Max. But regardless, it's still a cool card I think you should have. So, what have we got going on? A Croatian from Slovakia. Nice. I like that. Do I recall my first ever hollow pool? I mean, I opened base set. I opened base set when base set initially launched back in the 90s. I was old enough and nerdy enough that I literally bought base set brand new. Right, we got Red Hole Wagafer and that is not a good rare. Okay, we need to start opening some other good cards. There are a few packs in. I like the Doctor, but I'd, I'd like some more here. Uh, so I actually opened base set. Now, I don't remember, unfortunately, I don't remember the very first ever hollow I pulled. I do, however, vividly remember pulling a base set Charizard from a pack. There was a, a shop that used to be, it's not there anymore, unfortunately, but a shop used to be called PSI Collectibles down in Falmouth in Gormal, and they sold uh, booster packs down there. And I bought a pack of the base set, and I pulled base set Charizard, and I did know at the time what a big deal it was. I got super excited, right? And I... Right, we've got Rev Hollow Haunter and... Oh, I love this card. This and Lycanroc are my two favourite cards in the entire set. Malamar, use it to make a Rapid Strike box deck. I am all in on that. Malamar and Lycanroc are the two decks from this set I'm going to be testing the most. So yeah, so I op opened it and I was so excited, right? So I bought a, a big, big plastic slab case thing in the shop right there and then. I bought it because I, I bought a Charizard and I put the Charizard in this slab. And I kept it. So somewhere, don't know where, somewhere I have a brand new straight from pack to slab base set Charizard. Except I've not seen it for years and my parents have moved several times since. So I'm pretty sure at some point my mum binned that. So cheers mum, you binned a mint base set Charizard. Cheers for that. Just going to let that one sink in for a minute. Right. So what have we got? Rev Hollow Seabold and... Ooh, Ice Rider Calyrex V Max. A card to which I owe an apology. Because when they showed off the horses, first of all, I got super excited about Shadow Rider. And I said Ice Rider wasn't anywhere near as good. I was wrong. 
This is just doing extremely well over in Japan. And the thing is, I've seen a whole bunch of people being like, well, just because it's doing really well in Japan in a very similar format to ours doesn't mean it's going to be good over here. And I'm like, they're missing a couple of cards. It's not a big deal. I think it is going to be a legit card. I really do think it's very, very good. Dustin, I am glad I can help in any way. Thank you very much. How have the pulls been? I mean, so far, we're about a quarter of the way through the box. We've got an Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX, and we've got a Full Art Doctor. So, not great, honestly. Uh, lots of green. We've only had three white codes so far. Lots of green codes we've got. Zangoose. Cool. So, yeah, so far. Oh, oh, and a damage Sneasel. It doesn't matter. It's a random common. But, oh, come on. Focus, dude. Focus. I don't know how... There we go. You can see down here at the bottom, it's actually damaged. But again, it's it's a common sneeze. I could not care less. <laughs> hey, we've hit 300 followers. Yay! Is the build and battle box worth it? Ugh. The thing is, right, I, I said earlier, I've been a math teacher for quite a while. I've taught math many times. So I know the fallacy of relying on tiny sample sizes. But even so, my build and battle boxes have not been great. So, I opened two for this set. I've uploaded both of the videos. One was actually kind of good. The other wasn't great. So, there's your Clobopus. There's your Energy. Rapid Strike Scroll of the Skies. Dyna Tree Hill. Steeny. Impact Energy. And Beedrill. I like Beedrill. It's a very cool card. It's a card I'm definitely going to play around with. Instant one-hit KO on any Pokemon with a special energy attached. I will take it. Alrighty then, so, um, question for the chat. Which card, from all the cards in Chilling Rain, which of the cards are you most excited about? Now, I told you, for me, it's Malamar and Lycanroc, because Lycanroc, you can make a really, well, hopefully, but you can definitely make a single strike box deck. And Malamar, you can make a rapid strike box deck, and for me, box decks are where it's at. Making a really weird deck with multiple different options and let me react to whatever deck my opponent's playing, that, for me, is amazing. That is what I'm talking about. So, yeah, that's what I'm looking forward to. I want to know what you guys are looking forward to. So, let me know, ladies and gentlemen. So, Rev Hologlarian, your mask, and Full Art Volcanian V. I'll tell you what, when this box is giving us hits, it's not giving us the right ones. That is not the Full Art V that I wanted, or the Full Art support that I wanted. But we have got a couple of Full Arts. I mean, over in Japan... A booster box. Now, I've mentioned this a few times lately. The definition of secret rare is different over here and in Japan. In Japan, it includes full arts and alternate art Vs, which aren't included over here. But by Japanese standards, I pulled two secret rares. <laughs> Just not good ones. <laughs> so we've seen some love for the alternate arts like Zero Aura. Uh, the alternate art Birds. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. The alternate arts, really, since we hit, um, well, there's really battle styles. The alternate arts have just gone crazy. Raffolo Swordsbuck and Zeb Striker. Another cool card in a rapid strike deck. I love that Zeb Striker. 120 for a single energy. Yeah, I'll go for it, man. Ah, someone's excited about Beedrill. And Echo Horn, which is basically a reprint of, um, oh my goodness, what? Target Whistle. Reprint of Target Whistle. It's weird. I've got so much Pokemon knowledge just stored away up here that every so often I just forget, like, really random stuff. Hey-ho. Alternate art birds are hard to choose. Yeah, I'd love an alternate art. I opened three boxes of Eevee Heroes. They're all on the channel. All the openings are up here. And I didn't pull an alternate art, so I would love to get an alternate art in this box to make up for it. So, Rev Hollow Rugged Helmet and Spiritomb. I haven't got round to making this video yet. I hopefully will next week. This is a phenomenal card. If V Union cards get good, because you've got to have all four of the parts of the V Union in your discard in order to play it. And Spiritomb makes your opponent shuffle all the Pokemon from the discard back into their deck. So, yeah. Blissey, oh man. Blissey is one of those cards I really want to be good. I am desperate for Spiritomb to be good. Yeah, the Full Art Caitlyn is going to be one of the most, one of the most valuable cards in the set. 
And it's because of the character. Caitlyn as a card isn't great. We had it back in Plasma Blast. It was a bit interesting as a draw card. Some decks will use it. It's always going to be a, a bit of a fringe card. But Red Follows Feel. And oh, it's a second Malamar. See, it's weird. Like, on the one hand, I love that Malamar and I want a playset. On the other hand, I bet I can pick a playset up on eBay for £2. So, it's not exactly the pull I'm looking forward to. <laughs> I think it is fair to say. Ah, oh, the alternate art Blissey. It's not usually my kind of style, but I do like it. By the way, I, I'm going to start telling stories and get like waylaid. If anyone wants to remind me, I, I got halfway through a story and stopped. Please do let me know. So. Well, I, don't, I don't think so. Someone in Mento Disco Joe talked about the drama from the Pokemon Center Elite Trainer Boxes. Now, I did a video on it, so I would. Oh, that's right. I was saying how Caitlin was underwhelming before and probably will be again. But people love the character. And. Oh, it's a shaman. Okay. So, half the white code so far. We haven't got a single Pokemon V, incidentally. We got three Hollows, a V Max, and two Full Arts. No Pokemon V so far. We're like three packs away from the half of a box gone. So yeah, um, so the Pokemon Center Elite Trainer Boxes, basically there was a production error, go watch the video on this channel, would you? That'd be nice. But there was a production error whereby they have been made with eight packs, like a regular Elite Trainer Box, when they're supposed to be made with an extra two packs. But what Pokemon have done, they have refunded ten or credited ten dollars, which is the difference between a regular Elite Trainer Box and the Pokemon Center one. And they are sending out the extra two packs at their expense. And they're giving you one of each of the Galarian Bird Trio, which incidentally are very playable cards. It's Gallade. Okay. I really want the second half of the box to be better than the first. <laughs> that would be nice. So, um, I mean, in terms of fixing it right, what more could you reasonably expect? Like, a fix for that would have been, oh, we'll send you two packs. Sending two packs and giving a $10 credit, which was basically what you paid for it. And giving the free Galarian birds as well. Like, that's genuinely awesome. So, yeah. Uh, Sully is very excited about eating oranges, which is cool, I suppose. <laughs> There's Peony. Rare Follow Galarian Slowking. Hey, we bought a Pokemon V! I mean, it's not one of the horses or the birds, which are definitely the ones you want to pull. But we finally pulled a Pokemon V. So, hey, that'll do. That'll do. All right. So, we've got one pack left, and then we are halfway through the box. Yeah, it's not terrible. It's not great, if I'm honest with you. It's not terrible. We pulled three Hollows, a Pokemon V, a V Max, and two Full Arts. The thing is, although we've had some hits, they've not been good hits. The Pokemon V is one of the less inspiring ones. The, the Full Arts are among the less inspiring of them. And obviously, you know, hollows. It's always sad when you get a white code and it's a hollow. Because outside of very rare exceptions, the hollows can always be picked up on eBay. Super cheap. Hey, we've hit 400 viewers. That's kind of cool. <laughs> and it's Serena. Uh, again, not a, not a particularly good card. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I, mean, I mentioned this way too much lately. But I keep getting told, but we're halfway through below. That is the first half of the box. I keep getting told by people I'm dumb when I give business advice. And I'm like, dude, I taught business for like a decade and a half. I have a law degree. Like, this is, you know, people are like, oh, go go and stick to TCGs. And I'm like, dude, business is my jam. Believe me when I say, you know, what Pokemon have done for those elite trainer boxes. And look, I've done some work for Pokemon in the past. I am not unbiased at this point. Yeah, we all know I don't work for Pokemon. I'm not an employee. But I've done some work with them. I've done some commentary, etc. And, oh, I voiced that video they did, the, the promo video for the um, team challenge. That was a lot of fun. I love that video. I've showed, like, everyone everyone I've met since that video got put on Twitter. I've just been like, H have you seen this video? So much fun. So I'm not unbiased yet. But seriously, that is, compared to a lot of companies I've had issues with, and by that I mean basically all of them, that is about the best result you could have gone for. So, we've got Rev Hollow Grookey and, ooh, Galarian Zapdos V. That is, now I pulled one of them from my uh, Build and Battle Boxes. This is a great card. But it's also like a super confusing card, right? Because in theory, it is a phenomenal counter to Eternatus. 
and in theory, it is a phenomenal counter to Gengar. And yet, when this set came out in Japan, like Eternatus was the best deck, and that's been supplanted by Gengar. Despite the fact we've got a phenomenal, really techable counter to those two decks. So I don't really understand it, if I'm honest with you. But I don't really care. It's a great card. No, no special delivery Charizard, unfortunately. That is, um, yeah, it's just a rumor that got started, basically. Also, if you want to see about a really cool rumor that got started, do go and search on my channel for Claydol. Go, There's a Claydol EX video. Basically, a bunch of players pretended it was really good. Ooh, hollow grap locked. Yeah, just basically like pretended it was really good and tricked a bunch of people into playing it at nationals, which was um kind of fun. So yeah, ever thought of doing audio books? Ah, oh, Pokedom, I think of Little House. Uh, I don't know how much I've mentioned this. I love audio books, and the reason is super simple. I am an extremely busy dude. I have a wife and a mortgage. I have two children. I spend way too much time doing YouTube. And even though I've pretty much given up teaching now to do the YouTube, I am an extremely busy dude. And like the way I do YouTube, I'm kind of obsessive. So even when I'm not making videos, I am reading up about stuff. I am, you know, looking at deck lists, watching videos, playing games. I'm kind of obsessive about Pokemon and a couple of other card games. So I'm an extremely busy dude. So I have to, it is... That's yeah, another. I oh know it's a different wheezing. We got the Galarian wheezing earlier. It's not great, and so I have to be really careful with my time. So one of the things I cut out a while ago is reading. Don't read. Can't do it. I read magazines. I read comics, but reading books can't do it. Do not have the time to read books because that time can be spent playing video games or card games, things of that nature. But what I've done is I do audio books. So I have podcasts and I've generally got an audio book on the go at the same time. Uh, Dead Moon by Peter Kleins is what I'm listening to at the moment. I've just finished the Interdependency Trilogy by John Scalzi. Phenomenal trio of books. Plus the audio books are read by Will Wheaton. And who doesn't love Will Wheaton? So I, I do listen to audio books. I don't really read books anymore. I listen to audio books. Because reading can be for tabletop gaming magazine that I love, comics, things of that nature. So, yeah, because I listen to audiobooks and I kind of do voiceover for a living, oh, you better believe I daydream about recording audiobooks. And I'm not exaggerating literally every day. So, if anyone's got a hookup as to how I can get into doing audiobooks, let me know, would you? Oh, it's a wall rain. That was not worth the wait. Because, yeah constantly ladies and gentlemen constantly here's an interesting question all things back have gone 24 why don't i post videos of me playing online or in real life because i don't add very much i do occasionally I'll, I'll do videos here and there so for instance when i played in the players cup and i was playing a weird excadrill deck yeah i posted those videos online but there's a million content creators out there that are posting videos of them playing online I don't know what I can add. Now, I think I'm a very good player, but I've generally got a pet deck, which I work on for months at a time. Incidentally, since Excadrill and Excadrill Spiritomb, I've not found a good one. I've tried Mean Chow, I've tried Don Fan, it just hasn't worked. I can't find one. Revel of Galarian Farfetch'd and Golic. So, there's a lot of really good channels out there, like Mahone's Tricky Gym, like Omnipoke. And when I think about doing gameplay videos, I don't know what I can do better than them. Whereas when I think about business focused videos, news videos, new card reveals, I do think I do a better job than other channels at that. So I can look at that and think, this is why I'm doing it. This is a value that I'm adding. And I think that is borne out when you look at the views. Now, there's an argument I don't need to do openings. But having said that, some of my openings do really well. And I do think I can do openings, you know, a bit different and, and can add a little bit to them. I just don't think, if I'm doing gameplay, Rev Holly Delibird and... Ooh, Tornadus V. That's one I have not pulled yet. So, that's kind of cool. I like me some Tornadus V. I also really like the special art. Oh no, it's V Max is drawn by Arita, which is very cool. Did open the V Max, incidentally, in one of my build and battle kits. So yeah, I just, I don't know what I add with gameplay. 
And if I'm doing a gameplay video, then that's taken away from a news video, opinion video, business video, whatever, that on my channel are far more popular and that I know I am adding value above and beyond other channels. So that is the reason. It's a very fair question. I, I hope that makes a bunch of sense. What if Chorus got reprinted? Oh, I would love it. Great supporter card. I would love it. They announced Pokemon Center. Is that a hypothetical Pokemon Center International? Because do not tell me they dropped massive news while I was recording this, while doing this opening. Philippines, 1.30 a.m. That is dedication. I am into it. Rare Volagalarian, chest plate. And, oh, this Persimian's a really good card in Rapid Strike decks. Do more damage to the bench. Yeah, so Victory Arceus is kind of just, you know, parroted what I've said. That I don't mean that. I mean that in a good way. About kind of, you know, Mahone and Omnipoke doing the gameplay videos. One of the things about business, right? And again, let's go back to my business background here. One of the things you have... And that's what I'm doing. I am literally running a business here. It's weird to think about. But I am a registered sole trader in the UK. I do my tax return every year. I know in the US, everyone does a tax return. But in the UK, it's only if you're running a business. So I'm running like a proper business here. It's a legitimate business. And one of the things you have to do if you want to be successful in business is to be able to look at yourself honestly and go, what do I do well? What do I do that I can improve on? Survivor and another, we don't need another Serena. And what do I really need to stop focusing on? So when it comes to gameplay, there will be times when I'm playing in a big online tournament with Excadrill Spiritomb. Literally, and I mean literally, no one else is playing that deck. These are videos people are going to be into. But if it's a video about, hey, you know, a Shadow Rider Calyrex or an Ice Rider Calyrex video based on a new build from Chilling Rain, what am I adding over people like Omnipoke and Tricky Jim? And I'm not sure that I am. Weirdly enough, the, the damn panic, as horrible as it's been, one of the things it did was it shut schools. And for the past uh, couple of years, I've been kind of doing YouTube while substitute teaching Lediba and Chris Celia. Good card, but come on. Where are the pulls? I have seen some booster boxes people have posted online with, like, ridiculous pulls. We are not at that stage. So... You know, I was doing substitute teaching like three days a week and doing the YouTube on the side. And then school's shut. So when school shut, I did a very clever thing. And I don't often refer to myself as being clever. But this is a very clever thing to do. I went, right, this is my job now. So every morning, 9am, I'd come into my studio and I would just treat this like a job. And one of the things I did, which I should have done a couple of years ago, but I didn't. Never mind. Was I sat down... And I really took a good, hard, long look at my YouTube channel. And I spent a couple of days on and off just sitting down and going, right, which videos are people responding to? Which videos are doing well and which videos aren't? And I started changing up what I'm doing. And if you look from about, oh, Rev Holly Bayner, and did I need a second wall rain? No. The, the answer is no. And... If you look at my channel around about November time, it started going up. And the reason it started going up is because I have been really pedantic lately about really focusing on what's doing well on my channel and really focusing in on those videos rather than others. Now, there are exceptions. The history videos I do every Sunday. <laughs> Nobody needs a first wall rain. <laughs> Oh, that really tickled me. Cheers for that. Um, I just saw that at the corner of my eye, and I'm like, that's a good comment. Oh, I've lost my train of thought, though. Oh, uh, never mind. So, yeah, the, like the history videos. There we go. They are by far the most difficult and long videos I make, and they are among the least popular, although hopefully over time they'll pay for themselves, figuratively. But I love doing them, and I get really good feedback. Ooh, Galarian Articuno! Oh, now we need to pull a Moltres to complete the set. M maybe a special art? That would be nice. People are sleeping on this card, right? Discard two, draw one. There are some decks that are going to love this. Phenomenal. Oh, incidentally, there's not going to be a history video this week because it's been crazy. There is so much going on this week. Um, 
It's, it's been pushed. It's going to be... Le I think it's Legendary Treasures I'm up to now. But it will hopefully be next week. Yeah, I get so much good feedback on the history videos. But the views are quite low. And they... Like, whereas the average video takes maybe an hour and a half. And incidentally, if that sounds like I'm lazy, you've got to bear in mind I've spent five years working out how to do these videos believe me i have i've literally spent five years cutting down the amount of time it takes me to make them those history videos take like three times as long they take four or five hours to put together but i really do enjoy doing them and you know i think a lot of the time you've got to focus on what the audience as a whole wants but there is definitely there there is room to do videos that are kind of for me and the real fans which i think the history videos are a lot of the casual fans of this channel that pop in and out, and I love those people. They are amazing. They literally keep my children fed. This is my job now. <laughs> but they're not coming in and watching a half-hour history video about Plasma Blast. Rev Hollow Melanie and Blaziken V Max. I mean, look, I like getting Blaziken V and V Max in the same box. That makes me happy. But... I mean, look, we, we've had a bunch of decent cards. We've got four Vs, two Vmaxes, two Full Arts. But there's no Shadow Rider Calyrex Vmax. And there's no Special Arts. No no good Full Arts. So, hey-ho. 36? 36 was my football number when I played for the Nottingham Caesars. Yeah. Um... Heard anything about an apparent golden Pokemon 25th anniversary plushie? There are... I have seen some things. Some silver toys. I've seen some images floating around. It's not something I've been able to get a lot of concrete information about. But it's one of those things. When I find out a bit more, there might well be a video coming. I do like Blaziken VMAX, incidentally. I do think it is a playable card. It's just... It's not Shadow Horse or Ice Horse. If I'm honest with you. They are the best ones. Right. So, Rev Hollow... <laughs> don't like this card. This is not a good card. Oh, no. oh, it's a V. It's an Ice Rider Calyrex V. Which is nice. Also, I think I just said a minute ago I didn't pull the Ice Horse VMAX. I blatantly did. But look, both the VMAXs, I've pulled the accompanying Vs. Alrighty then. I mean, look, five Vs, two VMAXs, two full arts. That's not a bad haul. We've got five packs remaining. I want one of the special arts. Thank you very much, Sovenate. That's extremely kind of you. What do I think about Pokemon Unite? I don't know. Now, look, I am going to play the... I think there's a beta next weekend, right? And it's coming in the Switch in July. And incidentally, right, I'm playing on Switch. I'm not playing on... I'm not playing on mobile. I'm playing on Switch. I am going to play that game. And that is... I'm either going to play it for like four hours and quit. Or I'm going to get hopelessly hopelessly obsessed with it and play it for like three hours a night every night for weeks and weeks and weeks maybe into months if i really like it you'll see some videos on it and oh now this this might be the best card in the set this might legitimately be the best card in the set i have seen winning decks with this featuring inteleon v max dragapult v max ice horse v max this is a phenomenal card you are going to see a lot of different decks playing this card. This could be the best card in the set. My top 10 of Chilling Rain was supposed to go up yesterday. That's been pushed. And yeah, it's been pushed for like two days now. But I promise you it's going up tomorrow, he says. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, Unite, I am going to play it. I am going to play the heck out of Unite. I really, really like the look of it. I hope it's great. I really do. I will almost certainly do a couple videos, best characters, first gameplay, things of that nature, and see. And look, if the Unite videos are good, you better believe I am going to be doing a bunch of Unite videos. We'll just have to wait and see. But it's definitely someone I'm going to get excited about and just play a whole bunch of because I love Pokemon games. I mean, I, Pokemon Cafe, I've played over 100 hours, well over 100 hours. On two different files. That's 100 hours per file. And that's Pokemon Cafe. A bomber snow! First one. Yay. To be fair, extra 50 HP to single strike is pretty good. So yeah. I, I really like the look of it. But I'm like, I've gotten to the point now. And I don't know why I haven't been here for years. But I've gotten to the point now where literally any Pokemon video game that drops, I'll play it for a few hours to see what it is. So, Pokemon Snap, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, DX, 
uh, Pokemon. I mean, even Pokemon Smile. My daughter and I played that every evening for months until we completed the Pokedex. Yeah, that's right. My daughter and I completed the Pokedex on Pokemon Smile. <laughs> but Unite, I see Unite as I'll play it really heavily for a couple of weeks and then it will be my five minutes here or there. So my wife and I will be watching a bit of telly of an evening and I will have a game or two of Unite if it's something my wife's more into than I am. Or I'll take a break over lunch and I like playing games for like half an hour over lunch. So I'll do a couple games of Unite. Things of that nature. But I, I expect to play a lot of it. Rev Hevel Hollow Spiral Energy and Volcarona. Decent non non V attacker. What do I do with my duplicates? Every so often I do sell a bunch of bulk. Uh, generally I just have it's too heavy to actually pick up from the angle I am I'm at. But uh, see if you can figure this out. My wife just bought me like half a dozen of these. That's how big the boxes are. Uh, they fit thousands of cards. And I've told you I'm sorting out the studio. It's going to take literally weeks or maybe a couple of months. But over time, I am going to try and sort all of my cards into those. But there are like old sets where I've got eight copies of a particular common of a long rotated set. I don't need them. Do I enjoy the water Pokemon in Cornwall? I do genuinely, right? Misty has always been my one of my favourite gym leaders. She was right up until Corinna and B. And Clay. Love me some Clay as well. And people are like, oh, I know why you like Misty. <laughs> but no, I like Misty because I grew up next to the sea. Like properly, like my, my house I grew up in. You come out, you literally walk out the front door, you look to the left. And we weren't right on the beach because we weren't rich. But because we lived on the hill, you could see the sea. Literally come out of my house, look to the left, see the sea. Ah, I dropped it all. Uh, it's a Zangoose, apparently, is the rare in that pack. <laughs> dropped it. Sorry. Wasn't a good pack. So, yeah. It was, um... So I, I grew up, like, loving water and all... You know, so, so Misty was, like, a natural, you know, natural favourite. Right. We are up to 535 viewers. We have one pack left. I opened three boxes of Eevee Heroes and didn't pull a special art. I have had some good last pack magic on this channel. Could we have some last pack magic coming in here? It would be nice, wouldn't it? So, let me see, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see. Well, by Japanese standards, I pulled two secret rares. But yeah, no no actual secret rare. All right. So what we got? Hey, honey. Uh, there's an Avery. Ledian. Rev Hollow Kelia, And... It's funny because we started with the Junk Amphros and we finished with the Junk Amphros. <laughs> uh, funnily enough, uh, Kanishk B, if I mispronounce any of your names, I'm reading them quickly off the iPad, don't hate me. Uh, funnily enough, my daughter has actually just started watching the Pokemon anime in the past couple of weeks. So I've been watching a lot of um, Gen 7 anime lately with my daughter. Although generally, anytime my children are quiet and watching telly, I'm, I'm trying to learn Japanese. So I've got a couple of apps slash websites I use on my iPad. So like any time my children are actually quiet, they'll cuddle up with me on the sofa. They'll be watching telly. And that's an excuse for me to start busting out some Japanese learning apps. Wani Kani. I literally cannot recommend Wani Kani highly enough. Great Japanese learning website. So that's the box as a whole, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we ended up with. Base set actually had, a, I think, four theme decks or a bunch of them. Go check out my history video on the base set. Uh, if you go on the channel, one of the categories is complete history. And the first one on there is a base set. Check it out. It goes through all of that in there. So we ended up with six hollows, including an Inteleon, which is kind of cool. Five Pokemon V, including two of the birds and the ice horse. These are all kind of playable. Uh, two V Maxes. And then we got a Full Art Doctor and a Full Art Volcanian. Not exactly the best box ever. Not terrible, incidentally. Not, not trash, not garbage. But not what we were hoping for. W-A-N-I-K-A-N-I. -A -A -I. Wani Kani. Seriously, if you want to start learning Japanese, go to that website. Uh, I know I'm not really supposed to be, like, giving recommendations, but I am. It's my video. I can do what I like. Or the one thing I do need to do before we finish here is remind you about Cardex. I said this at the start of the video. I'm going to say it again before we finish. 
I don't partner with a I don't partner with many businesses on this channel, right? And I definitely don't partner with any I don't believe in. And I don't feel really good and comfortable sharing with you guys. So when I tell you about Cardex and how much I like them, this is a very sincere thing. I could have gotten a booster box of this from another business. Um, we all know there are some I won't partner with. But Cardex, they're cool. And they asked first. And I really like what they're doing. So it was a quick and an easy yes. I adore Cardex. I think those dudes are awesome. It's an online buying selling market. Kind of like eBay but just for trading cards. 3% selling fees rather than 10. And you all know 3% is a lot lower than 10%. Trust me. I used to teach maths. Because one of the supply teachers. That's like no call for supply business teachers. I taught like maybe 6 days in 2 years. Maths. Yeah, people always need math teachers. The problem is, because they always need math teachers, you go for like a day and they're like, like this happened so many times, you go for a day of math teaching and they're like, do you want to do a whole term? Because you're not absolutely terrible. <laughs> so yeah, go check out Cardex. If you want to join the giveaway, look, there is a link in the description. Follow that link. You need to be signed up to Cardex. Obviously. Why would you not need to be for the giveaway? Come on, you know all of this. Um, subscribe to this channel to give yourself an extra chance. Subscribe to Bird Keeper Toby to give yourself an extra chance. Facebook, Instagram, it's all on the website, all right? Follow the link in the description. I'm fairly sure. Hey, John. John Stevens. So, yeah, do go check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Seriously, that is a website that deserves your love. It's also, especially if you're... They, they, they chip outside of the UK, but especially... Especially if you're UK based, let's give some love to a UK based business, yeah? And even if you're not, I'm UK based. So, you know, give some love to them on my behalf. I don't know, check out Cardex, they are awesome. And they did provide the box, incidentally, it is a sponsored opening. I told you that at the beginning, but let's be super transparent. They provided a box because they are awesome. Although, you know, next time, let's have a box of a special art, shall we? Right, I have really enjoyed this, ladies and gentlemen. No, it is not only UK. It is not only UK, let's be clear. I'm just saying they're a UK-based business. Go check out the link. All the information is on the link. That is the best place to do. So, yeah, um, I don't know where I'm going with this, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, thank you for watching. The, 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 the view account is dropping precipitously. We hit over 500 views. I had 500 people watch me open Pokemon cards. That is a cool way to spend a Thursday afternoon. But I've actually finished all my work for the day. And my wife and son are going to be home soon. Daughter's having a sleepover at Nana's house, which is fun. But I need to go and kind of see my family. And I've finished my work for the day. So thanks for watching. You And seriously, if you're still watching, that means you didn't leave as soon as you saw what the pools were. You stayed around to listen to my jabbering. That makes you guys my favourites. But yeah, comment, like, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. You know all of this stuff, ladies. We do this every time, right? Check out Cardex. They are awesome, and I mean that sincerely. You know I do not advertise and sponsorship and all of that. I don't partner with businesses I don't like. So when I'm telling you Cardex are cool, I mean Cardex are cool. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome. Look after yourselves till next time. All that good stuff. Bye! And now the awkward bit where I try and fumble to actually stop the stream.